Hello everyone. Before we get into the video, I'd like to discuss something. You might have noticed already, but what you're hearing isn't the typical Violi voice you're used to. Well, that's because I'd like to do a little experimentation with this video. Now obviously quite a lot of you enjoy the voice I use in these videos, but there's more than a few people who have made comments over the years saying that the way I narrate these videos isn't their cup of tea. Now the reason I decided to speak the way I do on this channel is because I always figured that darker subject matter deserves a darker tone, and I still believe that. However, I've always thought that my videos are successful because of the way they're written, not the way they're spoken. And with that in mind, I've decided to use this video to see which side of me you'd prefer to hear going forward, the real me, or the vile voice that you've all come to know, and mostly love. So, throughout this episode, you're going to be hearing my regular speaking voice, and I want you to tell me down below if you prefer this, or what I've been doing. A few days from now, I'll put up a poll in a community post to get a more concrete answer. If it turns out that you all prefer the voice I've been using, I'll make sure that it's the one you hear in every video going forward. But if not, this could be the new voice of the eye, and perhaps that's for the best. With that out of the way, I'd like to welcome you all to the 131st episode of Analyzing Evil, featuring Clay Puppington from Moral Oral. Clay is a horrific example of what wrong can come from people who believe they're doing good. A man who's molded into a monster by the shoddy and corrupted values of a society that believes wholeheartedly in its own righteousness. One that corrupts all who it touches with its poisonous and backwards moral structure. In this video, we're going to explore everything that made Clay Puppington into a man that none should envy and all should pity. A dangerous misanthrope whose status as head of a family and a small town causes harm to all who surround him, including himself. But first, let's talk about our sponsor for this video, Dave. I've actually used Dave quite a few times when I've been in a pinch. They even helped me when I needed a new battery for my car a couple years ago, and I'm happy to spread the word about what they have to offer. Dave is a banking app that could help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. And with Dave, there's no interest, late fees, or credit check required to get the help you need. We've all been in a position where we need a little extra cash. And if you're dealing with an unexpected expense, that can make matters even worse. And it's invaluable having an asset that can get you the help you need without breaking the bank. To see what Dave can do to help you in your time of need, download Dave today at dave.com file. That's dave.com file to sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. Thank you, Dave, for sponsoring this video. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Now, we can't talk about Clay Puppington without first discussing his hometown, Moralton, which is conveniently placed in the exact center of the United States, with a church at its center. Moralton is a bastion of every negative stereotype of 1950s small-town middle America, and considering Moralton is supposedly in the exact geographical center of the United States, middle America couldn't be a more fitting term to use to describe it. Of course, the main stereotype that plagues Moralton are the values of evangelical Protestantism that dictates all laws, entertainment, culture, and trade goods. The education system is based on faith, with science classes used as a vehicle for the reinforcement of ideas like dinosaur bones being used by God to grow dinosaurs, and the earth being only a few thousand years old. And the police in town are more concerned with protecting the status quo than they are with fighting crime or helping people. Nudity and swearing are more cause for concern than murder and drug use are, and beating one's children is considered a virtuous act that steers the pious children of Moralton towards God. Entertainment is entirely relegated to what people widely had access to in the 1950s, namely radios, turntables, toys, and the occasional pinball machine. Though it's implied by the stock of Stephanie's store, Berry Pleasures, that other forms of media are available if one should wish to consume them. With access to such a wide variety of media outlets, the people of Moralton spend their time listening to songs on the radio with lyrics like, Reason is the enemy of faith, my friend. A head that's filled with knowledge soon is too bloated with its own weight. At home, children can listen to classics on vinyl, like Turn the Other Cheek, a song that uses the slapping of a woman as an instrument, and implores them to turn the other cheek and show the world how strong they are by simply acting weak, so that of course they, as the meek, can inherit the earth one day. Children play exclusively with Bible-inspired toys, like the Super God action figure, and Super God has even given his own pinball machine in Forgetti's pub if any pious drinkers need a bit of fun to go with their beer. 
Nearly everyone of note in Moralton dresses in formal, or at the very least casual formal clothing, and one can't step more than three feet without encountering some sort of reference to God. Now why they choose to model their society around this time period likely comes down to their attitude that this was the peak of civilization, a time when God was providing modern comforts and an expansion of man's dominion over nature, and more importantly, a time when the flow of information could be more easily monitored and regulated. Without television or the internet, controlling the flow of information to the youth becomes a much easier task, and they can easily ban anything that runs counterintuitive to their beliefs, shunning anything created after their chosen time period as nothing more than sinful drivel. Ignorance is bliss may as well be the town motto of Moralton, and it's taken to such a severe degree that even when tragedy strikes, the people of Moralton are nearly always more concerned with offending God than they are with their own safety or the safety of others. Like when the town is overrun by zombies, and the fact that these zombies are naked is more cause for concern than the zombies themselves. But the harm that their willful ignorance causes them is perhaps most prevalent in the way they take care of their bodies. Chemicals and pills are used in lieu of any kind of accurate medical diagnosis. Tobacco and fatty meats are seen as a path to health and well-being, and the citizens of Moralton are no more mindful of their health and safety than any company shelling these products out in the era they idolize were. Another example of their ignorance and backwards morals is the fact that the town is sequestered by race, each section lovingly referred to as Soul Food Town or China Food Town. Even their school mascot is racially charged, the fighting vanishing American. And of course, the white Protestants of Moralton are seen as the people who were made in God's image. And God's chosen people aren't above setting or defending the boundary lines of color when they need to. All this repression and moral grandstanding does nothing more than stifle the true nature of Moralton citizens. And every single person in Moralton, while they do certainly adhere to and believe in their faith to a certain degree, is only keeping up the status quo for appearances. And rather than doing these citizens good, it's causing them quite a lot of harm. And no one is more representative of this idea than the subject of our video, Clay Puppington. Clay Puppington is everything wrong with Moralton packaged into one person. And considering he's the chosen leader of this evangelical hellhole, that's quite fitting. Born in Moralton and raised in a righteously religious household just like all its citizens, Clay was a child who had nearly the same temperament as his son Oral, and he appeared to be relatively innocent and trusting. He was intensely close to his mother, a woman who suffered 10 miscarriages due to her excessive smoking, drinking, and physical activity during her pregnancies. Because of these experiences, she coddled Clay and spoiled him rotten to the point that he even developed an Oedipus complex, and her babying naturally caused him to be inherently selfish, a trait that he would carry on into adulthood, along with the religious fundamentalism she imparted upon her son. Clay might have had at least one level-headed, albeit jaded parent, his father, a man who was unhappy with his son's development into an overly nurtured mama's boy, a man who was spurned by his wife because she focused solely on their son due to the trauma she suffered from her miscarriages. Though the idea that Arthur was a somewhat decent father only rings true prior to the death of his wife. After Clay learns of his mother's miscarriages, he decides to play a prank on her by faking his suicide, and he did this because he thought he'd lost some of his mother's attention, and so he sought to regain it by playing with her emotions. And because he did, his mother suffered a heart attack. This drove an even deeper wedge between Clay and his father, and if he was jaded before, that was nothing compared to what Arthur Puppington felt now. Because of his mother's death, and the subsequent scorn of his father, Clay's desire for attention translated to the pursuit of his father's punishment so he could receive any kind of emotion out of him. Their relationship would only deteriorate as this continued though, and the petulant and self-absorbed Clay was essentially abandoned by his father. Now because his mother was the primary influence in his life, Clay developed into a man that echoed the values she instilled in him. When Blaberta met him at Millie's wedding, Clay listed his primary hobby as reading the Bible alone at home. And while this is certainly a reflection of the values that were instilled into him, what's more important is why he says that he's only into the Bible and heaven. And that's because it lasts. When Blaberta asked Clay about his parents, he told her they were dead, even though we learn later on in the special that his father is still alive. But to Clay, his father might as well be dead, and we do know for certain that his mother is. And if Clay is all alone here as he claims, his statement that he enjoys what he enjoys because they last shows that even during this more pure time in his life, he was a cynical man. A man who experienced losing the unconditional love of his mother and the scorn of his father. A young man alone in the world 
who can't stand the impermanence of mortal life and looks only towards eternal life in the presence of God. While this is quite a sad existence, it is a harmless one, and if Clay Puppington had continued to live his life in this way, he might have caused harm to nobody but himself. But Clay's destiny was to be molded by others into a man he never should have been, and just as his mother harmed his development into an adult, Bloberta continues her legacy by doing much the same in Clay's adulthood. Due to her loneliness and insecurities regarding her own usefulness, Bloberta sought to mold Clay into the husband she always wanted, and in order to do that, she introduced Clay to alcohol. Once she did, Clay came out of his shell, and though this causes Clay to relax and let go of his inhibitions in this moment, Introducing him to alcohol and strong arming him into changing and getting married was possibly the worst thing for Clay, as not only has his inherent selfishness, repressed rage, grief, and self pity that he'd been stifling with religion been unleashed, but he's now in a situation that can only make him unhappy in the long run, a situation that will only exasperate those repressed feelings to an unholy degree. When we're given our first look at Clay Puppington, husband and father of two, we're shown a man who's misguided, cynical, judgmental, hypocritical, uncaring, misogynistic, abusive, emotionally distant, neglectful, and ignorant, traits which he uses to great effect in upholding the status quo of Moralton and in his rearing of his son Oral. Clay is wholly unsatisfied with his existence throughout the entire show, though like everyone else in this series, he hides it quite well for a long time. Before we get to the third season, however, where many characters reach their breaking point, Clay does still express his dissatisfaction with life in a few different ways, mostly by constantly talking about his dead-end job and complaining about his wife in every way you can imagine. Miserable is probably the single best word to describe Clay Puppington. He hates himself, and due to everything we've discussed thus far, Clay is a deeply depressed man, one who is unfortunately suicidal as well. But though it might be quite apparent why he's miserable, you have to keep in mind that Clay's childhood prior to his mother's death was the only time in his life where he was truly happy and carefree. And it's no surprise that a spoiled child would become unsatisfied with all that adulthood has to offer, especially when he's married to someone he never really wanted to marry and he lives in a place like Moralton. Add in the fact that Clay is in the closet, and you have the perfect recipe for a man who is not at all who he wants to be. Now someone so miserable is bound to turn to some sort of coping mechanism, and unfortunately for the rest of the world, Clay's is alcohol. Clay's goal when using alcohol is to numb himself, but he also uses it to forget. To forget that he's a husband, father, and mayor. A man who's unsatisfied with all his roles, and who has no direction, purpose, or reason to live. Now all of whom Clay is has led him to doing some rather nasty things, and for the majority of the show, those things typically come in the form of him having a hand in his son's commitment of some of the most heinous and deplorable crimes ever put to claymation. And if he doesn't have a hand in helping his son commit crimes, he does have a hand in causing his son to hurt himself in many ways. Though to be fair, he's certainly not alone in causing Oral to do these things, but the horrid advice he gives to his son is definitely a part of it. Unleashing a zombie apocalypse, assaulting and impregnating women with his own seed and a pastry bag, beating up two young boys with a baseball bat for the sake of loyalty, selling his urine as a sports drink, Oral's crack and alcohol addiction, all these things and more are partly inspired by Clay's Moralton-derived, fear-based parenting style. But it's not until the end of season two that we get to see what harm that all that Clay has been through has done to his person. During the two-part episode Nature, Clay takes his son on the traditional Puppington father-son hunting trip, and this is when the entire dynamic of moral oral changes. Up until this point, we've essentially been seeing this show through the eyes of a still innocent Oral, a pure child who views the corrupt nature of Moralton as virtuous and godly. And we even get a cute stop motion film of all of Oral's exploits in the previous episode, one that shocks its adult viewers with its innocent take on their horrid exploits. But during their hunting trip, Clay makes sure that whatever wool was over his son's eyes is ripped to shreds with the cold reality of life in Moralton. Though Clay has disciplined his son numerous times at this point, he'd always done it with a smile on his face and a chip on his shoulder. The harshness of his jaded worldly advice, masked by Oral's innocence and naivete. But more importantly, Oral has never really spent too much one-on-one -on -one quality time with his father. Here it's just Clay and Oral, and during his extended exposure to his father, we're given our true introduction to the evil of Clay Puppington. Plied with alcohol as usual, and free from any societal inhibitions, Clay shows himself to be just as uncaring as he usually is. But now he's far more cruel and exceptionally brutal. 
He refuses to acknowledge Oral's apprehension to hunting, and he chooses to instead force the practice on him without any tenderness or thought put to the matter. In fact, after Oral fails multiple times to kill an animal, Clay becomes furious, ranting nonsensically about the animals of nature being the enemy, and he takes it upon himself to finish the job on a deer. And afterwards, Clay spitefully tells Oral that he wins and Oral loses, somehow proving to himself that killing these animals is right and he's triumphed over his son's pacifistic ways. Shortly after though, because he's so inebriated, Clay shoots someone's hunting dog. And even though he appears to realize this when he mounts the dog's head and labels it Tasty the Dog, he still proceeds to disgust his son and us as he cooks and eats the poor thing. Now what happens next is the most despicable thing Clay Puppington does in this series. As father and son are conversing around the campfire and Oral begins to call out how horrible of a person Clay is, Clay ends up shooting Oral in the leg. Once he does, he blames it on Oral rather than taking any responsibility for it. And when Oral advises him to reach for some disinfectant to help him out, Clay downs it instead, leaving his son to fend for himself while he lays passed out beside him. Oral is then forced to defend himself from a bear and then spends nearly 24 hours in agonizing pain. And when Clay wakes up and learns of his son's predicament, he first denies shooting him, then claims that it wasn't his fault even if he did because he doesn't remember doing it. From here on out, we get to see Clay in a different and horrific light, his selfish, narcissistic, and vindictive nature on full display. He goes on a rant at the pub, decrying his pitiful life and the sad world he inhabits, shoving the gnawing feelings of self-hatred and disillusionment that he feels on all present. It's revealed that he didn't talk to his son about the shooting for six months, and when he was given the opportunity, he chose to veer the conversation towards his own fear of losing his position as mayor. When he discovers that his son is spending time with his coach, so that he might repair his relationship with his father, he completely disregards his feelings and evolves into a hateful and sorrowful mess at the prospect of losing his relationship with Danielle. All of these things, and all that Clay Puppington is, amounts to one incredibly pathetic and dangerous individual, and the evil of Clay Puppington is found in his selfishness, self-hatred, and self-pity, all of which cause him to only think about himself and act in a way that harms people physically or emotionally. And when we ask ourselves who Clay Puppington is, we find the answer being a man who was warped and twisted by corrupted moral and religious values. A boy who experienced an unhealthy amount of trauma, coddling, and neglect that caused him to develop into a caricature of every supposed virtuous value that was drilled into him. But what really makes Clay so terrifying is that he represents something all too real. Yes, his character is an exaggeration of the damage and upbringing and adult existence that's surrounded by a shifty moral structure can bring, but he is the reality that some people have had to face to a lesser, even, or more extreme degree. He's a spiteful husband whose love for his wife can be counted in dust mites. He's a father who performs his duties as a guide and mentor, callously and haphazardly, and he's a mayor upholding the values of a system that ravaged his life and warped him into a shadow of what he could have been had he not been handled so carelessly. Clay Puppington is a modern American horror, one whose evil is found in his obsession with the self. But though Clay Puppington is the dark representative of a broken value system and a corrupted society, and he shouldn't be excused for any of his actions, he's a perfect example of the idea that evil is not born, it is made. Thank you all for tuning into this episode of Analyzing Evil, and I hope you've enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Clay? Did I miss anything? Let me know down below and leave a suggestion for a villain you'd like to see featured while you're at it. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. A big thank you to all of my subscribers, to my patrons, and to anyone who's decided to honor me with a super thank, and a most vile thank you to those whose names you're seeing on screen now. Join the channel's Discord server and Reddit to interact with myself and the community. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.